Okay, good morning everybody. I am Henrik Lear and I am an assistant professor of criminal justice here at School of Public Affairs. Thank you everybody so much for coming this morning. My warmest welcome to all the panel members this morning. We are so grateful to have about 16 or 17 different representatives from, I'm sorry, 21 different representatives from 16 or 17 different agencies. These individuals have taken time from their extremely busy schedules to come to talk to you guys here this morning. So we are extremely grateful to have you all here. Thank you so, so very much. I am not going to introduce the panel members. I will let the panel members to do that themselves and tell about the exciting career opportunities that they have with their respective agencies. However, I just wanted to let you know that I am responsible for the academic part of your internships, which you will have to take for, in order to graduate with your uh, bachelor's or your master's here in with criminal justice. However, for the law enforcement portion, uh, Mr. Rod Walker, who is Rod Williams Santa Cruz. Rod is a former deputy chief with the Colorado Springs Police Department and 33 year veteran with the Colorado Springs Police Department. So if you are doing an internship with the law enforcement agency, you will work, you will enroll under uh, Mr. Walker. Okay, I will be responsible with everything else. All right, so thank you so much for the panel members for coming this morning, and thank you for all of you students for taking time of your schedule too for coming here today. So what we will be doing is that the panelists will first give about five to ten minute brief introduction of their agencies. They will tell you what the agencies do, what the career in their agencies look like, and then how would you, what your role as intern would be or what your role as intern would look like with their agency. Then after every panelist has gone through and explained um, about their agencies or introduced their agencies, you will have an open floor as a student to ask questions. If you are too shy to ask the questions in front of everybody, you will also have an opportunity after the formal portion is over to come meet some of the panelists face to face based on your personal interests. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. And we are going to start with Ms. Alondra Gonzalez. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, so my name is Alondra Gonzalez. I'm here representing the Division of Adolph Grohl here in Colorado Springs. Um, we uh, are located not very far from here, so I thought this was a great opportunity to come and recruit some interns. Um, a little bit about my agency, uh, we work with offenders coming out of DOC, Department of Corrections, prison. Um, our caseloads vary from officer to officer. We work with uh, sex offenders, gang, um, inmates, um, offenders currently in the halfway houses, so we have quite a variety of caseloads. Um, we can carry caseloads of up to 65, 70. Um, sex offender unit typically carries around 30 to 40 offenders that they have to supervise in the community. Um, part of our job is to reintegrate these offenders into the community safely while holding them accountable. Um, we are state officers, so you do have to be Colorado Post in order to get uh, onto the division. Um, we work closely with parole mental health in-house. We work with uh, community reentry services, um, helps them, the offenders get uh, jobs started, um, just kind of getting back into, into the community. Some of these offenders have been incarcerated for 20, 25 years. Some have been incarcerated in and out of prison their entire lives. So we do provide a support system for them. Um, However, uh, we do also criminally file charges if we need to, we investigate cases. Um, we have different subsections within the division of adult parole. We have the Fugitive Apprehension Unit right now that goes and finds people that run from parole. Um, we have in the office uh, liaisons with uh, ATF. Um, uh, the FE, uh, we work closely as well with the U.S. Marshals. Um, if we need to, we do ops with them. Um, we work with CSPD, Vice Narcotics. I mean, you name it, we're kind of working with them. So um, if that's something that interests you, um, please talk to me in regards to it. Um, the internship, uh, 
You cannot go and conduct home visits and investigations with us out in the field due to us being armed. Um, however, uh, last year I did have the uh, interns assist with um, helping the officers investigate some activities with the offenders and kind of put those cases uh, together for us. We um, do <coughs> many arrests. Um, uh, the interns have helped us with those. Um, we do the parole hearings within uh, El Paso County Jail. We've also assisted with those cases. Um, reports of investigation. Um, I'm trying to think what else. They've worked with uh, other agencies, um, with the sex offender unit, going to different treatment providers and staffing weekly with them. Um, the gang officers, the intel meetings. So um, it's a great division. You really wear a lot of hats throughout the day. Um, you can be in court in the morning and arresting someone late in the afternoon. So um, it gives you kind of a broad aspect of what you would like to do in the criminal justice system. Um, some of the minimum requirements, uh, you do have to be 21 uh, to get into as an intern. Um, you do have to give it about maybe a month, month and a half to get your background checked. Uh, you'd go through the university, university contacts um, headquarters for us. Um, we then conduct an interview with the interns, um, potential interns. Uh, we choose you and then you'll start the background investigation to see if you um, are credible enough to get into the, the, the office. Just, uh, we, we do handle a lot of sensitive information, so that's something of the process um, to get in. Um, I believe the interns this summer did about 160 hours. We're really flexible with that. Um, so if you do or if you are working, uh, we, we can work around that. Um, I'm currently coordinating the interns, so if you do have any questions, please let me know. I know that was a lot of information, but I don't have a PowerPoint, but I'll be here until about 1.30, okay? Good morning. My name is Jen Bierstrom. Um, I'm here representing Safe Passage Children's Advocacy Center. Um, most of you probably have no idea what, uh, what that is, and that's okay. Um, we work um, hand in hand with um, area law enforcement agencies and Department of Human Services when there is an allegation of abuse on a child. Um, so we primarily work with um, sexual abuse cases, sexual abuse, sexual assault. We do um, occasionally get physical abuse cases as well. Um, so anytime um, a child uh, discloses to someone, um, law enforcement or DHS will bring that kid to us. Um, to have their forensic interview done. Um, so it could be forensic interview, forensic medical exam. Um, we also provide advocacy for non-offending parents um, and those families. Um, so that's a little bit about what we do. Um, it's a really great place to um, meet people in different agencies um, in the area. Um, careers um, at Safe Passage are few and far between. We're a staff of six, um, primarily composed of forensic interviewers, um, and family advocates. Um, so, like I said, um, there's not a lot of growth opportunity within Safe Passage, but it's a really great place to meet um, detectives, people in Department of Human Services, um, and places, um, many different agencies with law enforcement. Um, as far as internships go, um, because we're already working with um, children who have uh, who are victims and who are at risk, um, we definitely do um, interview references, background check kind of thing. Um, you have to be 18. Um, let's see. I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, trying to think of any important information. Uh, no, not really. Uh, as far as um, what you would do when you were there, um, you'll spend a lot of time um, working with the kids, um, sort of keeping them safe, um, hanging out in the playroom when their parents are being talked to by law enforcement. Um, you'll also um, just get to know a lot of us around the office, whether that's with filing, um, helping with day-to-day -day office function, um, that kind of thing. Um, and if you're interested at all in crimes against children, um, it's a really great place to come and see what that process looks like. Um, and um, you'll love people. Good morning, thanks for coming. I'm Lori Thomas, I'm here with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we are responsible for um, unincorporated El Paso County. Um, it makes up about 2,000 square miles and about 650,000 people. Um, by statute, we are required to man the jail, the county jail, uh, the civil unit, and wildland fire operations. So our office is made up of three bureaus. Uh, the first bureau I'll talk about is our detention bureau. 
Um, we've got four security, so our deputies down there are responsible for the safety of the inmates, the employees, and of course volunteers that come in. Um, part of the Detention Bureau also is our operations unit. Um, that would be our uh, court and transport um, unit. So they're responsible for taking our inmates to and from um, the courtrooms um, and medical appointments, which a lot of people don't know. And of course, they're responsible for transporting people to DOC when they finally get sentenced. Um, part of operations is also intake and release. So when you first come in down at the jail, intake and release, they booked in approximately just over 20,000 people last year. Um, they're also responsible for work release. So um, if you're in our jail, um, and you're eligible, you can also um, be part of work release. You pay $22 a day. We let you, well, you're allowed to go out during the day, go to work, and come back. Um, inmate classification is down there in operations, part of operations. Um, they're the ones that um, review your file. They can keep you separated. Um, um, inmates who are at risk, we would separate them from, of course, the high risk um, inmates. People who are um, um, co-conspirators on a crime, I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, we don't want them together in the same area, obviously. That's what our inmate class people do, keep them separate, even during transport to and from um, court. Um, we also have inmate programs down at the jail. Um, Janet King is our programs manager. We have <coughs> different kind of programs down at our jail, mostly staffed by volunteers. We've got programs like yoga and meditation, we have a lady that comes in once every two weeks and teaches Shakespeare. We've got um, some people that come specifically for that board um, let, and let those offenders or let those guys know what they are um, eligible for while they're in jail, what they're eligible for once they get out of jail. Um, that's kind of our uh, detentions bureau. Um, the second bureau we're responsible for is the law enforcement bureau. So this is um, primarily um, investigations. They're the ones, obviously, that are um, investigating our homicides, our sexual assaults, financial crimes. They do um, interviews, arrest warrants, subpoenas. Um, part of that unit is also our sex offender registration unit. So um, they're responsible. I think we have approximately 240 registered sex offenders in El Paso County. Uh, we've got an evidence unit that um, we're responsible for. Last year they brought in approximately 25,000 pieces of evidence. Um, our victim's advocates fall under investigations. I've got a lot of volunteers that help out in victim's advocates because that's a 24-7 job. Um, patrol falls under um, our law enforcement bureau. They do all kinds of calls from domestic violence, motorist assists, suspicious incidences, um, alarms, harassment calls. Um, even a little more exciting, we've got our special ops division, it's um, SWAT. Uh, all, they're the ones that go out and do our high risk warrants, hostage situations, security details, um, the canine unit. Um, they go out and help at um, down at detentions, so they'll run the dogs through um, where the inmates are, the schools, sometimes they'll bring them for the schools. Um, we've also got a fairly new um, unit. It's called the uh, Rural, it's hard for me to say, Rural Enforcement Outreach Unit. They're the ones that go out and work out east. Um, people, our community out east has a little different need than um, some of the other communities, so we've set up a, a unit to go out there. They work that end right now. Um, of course, I'm sure everybody's aware of the illegal marijuana grows that are going on primarily out east. So they're a part of that. They do a lot of our special events out there. <coughs> they work um, side by side with CSP with the homelessness, They're trying to um, work that out. So um, again, a fairly new unit, but that's something that we do. Um, of course, our school resource officers. We've got a reserve unit. It's made up primarily. Um, it's all volunteer. These, it's a sworn volunteer position. We put you through an academy, and you do your side by side with an actual um, deputy going out on all kinds of calls, getting a lot of experience on that. We've got a citizen's patrol unit. It's a non-sworn position. Um, people don't realize it, but these guys are, it, and it's not just guys, but these people are, um, they go out and they'll do like vacation checks. You're gonna be gone vacation for a week at a time. You want someone to just do a drive-by and make sure you're 
you know, everything looks good around the house. Our, that's what we have our, our citizens patrol do. They do impounded vehicles. They do um, tagging of vehicles that sit on the road. Um, and then, now, of course, obviously, making sure they actually get impounded. So that's our um, law enforcement bureau. We've also got um, the administrative and support bureau, uh, or yeah, and support bureau. Um, so our administrative services unit, uh, we've got fleet. A lot of people don't realize we have over 400 different units that our fleet division is responsible for. We've got everything from cars, SUVs, trailers, um, the SWAT vehicle, the special vehicles, wildland fire vehicles, our fleet is responsible for those. Uh, we've got the budget unit. unit, of course, they make sure that we stay on budget every year, maintain um, medical contracts. Um, we need to, of course, make sure that we've got medical for our inmates down at the jail and the food contracts down in the jail. Um, we've got community relations. They do a lot of, we're trying to rebuild with the community and let them know that um, we're the for them. Um, our training unit, they're responsible for sworn um, in-service. We have to do in-service every year. You got three days if you're a sworn deputy. You got one day of in-service training. You're a civilian employee, so our training unit is responsible for all of that training. They're responsible for reserve our reserve academies. They're responsible for our post academies. They're responsible for our non-certified academies. Um, civil, of course, these are the um, this is the unit that goes out and serves your summons and complaints, the evictions, garnishments. They're responsible for all of those. Um, we've got background investigators. They do um, background investigations on um, sworn staff, uh, sworn employees, civilian employees. Um, some of my volunteers, they have to specifically go through a, we call it a CBSA, computerized voice stress analysis. I'll do the background check and then if we, they need a CBSA, I'll push it over to our background unit. Um, the support um, operations part of it is like our dispatch. Um, of course, obviously, they're the ones that bring in all the, they get all the incoming calls. Last year, they, they answered over 400 calls. Um, they do um, emergency calls, non-emergency calls. They do um, dispatch for our fire department also. We've got media services as part of um, the support operations. <coughs> they do um, our social media. They do um, flyers and brochures that we need for the different programs that we do, um, like Coffee with a Cop. Uh, they participate, they help out with the um, Peace Officers Memorial every year. We've got, two, uh, last year we only had one PIO, now we have two PIOs. They respond to a lot of media requests, interviews, quarter requests. Um, of course, concealed <coughs> handgun permits falls under um, the Sheriff's Office by statute. So that's the uh, department that um, processes everybody who wants a concealed handgun permit that lives in El Paso County. Uh, last year, they issued uh, like 8,500 brand new permits. Um, records falls under it, the IT department. Um, a lot of people don't know that we're responsible for emergency services. Um, so part of our, uh, our emergency services is search and rescue. Uh, search and Rescue responded to 142 missions last year, so 898 rescues, I don't think that's right, 89 rescues and 49 searches, and a lot of that is done on our trail and the incline. Um, we're also responsible for wildland fire, so our wildland fire crew uh, responded to over 800 calls both in-state and out-of-state. Um, some of our in-state calls were the Sunshine Fire, the Peak 2 Fire, and the uh, Trout Creek Fire. And then out of state, we sent them out to um, Central Kansas, Montana, Oregon, South Dakota. Um, our wildland fire crew is made up primarily of volunteers also. <coughs> Obviously, our role in the community is um, it's probably, I would say it's the same as our mission statement. Um, provide the citizens of El Paso County effective and efficient public safety services. Uh, we deliver them with character, competence, and transparency. We want to ensure that um, El Paso County remains the safest, most enjoyable place to live and visit in the state of Colorado. Um, so for us, um, some of the minimum requirements for um, becoming an intern is, um, be honest on your intern application, I brought some in case anybody's interested, be at least 18, no felony convictions, no misdemeanor convictions in the past three years. Um, 
must, must not have been incarcerated or held in our detention facility in the past three years, not be related to anybody in our jail. Um, you'll go through the CDSA, um, so you must successfully pass that. Um, some different, obviously, career opportunities at the Sheriff's Office. We've got both sworn and civilian positions. Uh, our sworn positions, we've got deputies down at CJC, we've got community outreach, we've got patrol, um, school resource officers. Obviously, we've got advancement opportunities. Um, you get promoted to sergeant, lieutenant, commander, bureau chief, and the under sheriff. Um, our sheriff is an elected official, so. Um, civilian positions at the sheriff's office, uh, dispatch, records, IT, fleet, um, inmate class, um, and of course, we've also got volunteer positions, so after you're an intern, we'll see if you're interested in becoming a volunteer. Um, again, right now, volunteer uh, positions we have, wildland fire, search and rescue. Right now, we're currently looking for um, uh, male AA facilitators to go into our jail as part of our inmate programs. Um, we need a male NA, uh, Narcotics Anonymous, facilitator down at our jail. So if you guys are interested, or if you know anybody who's interested in those volunteer positions, I'm also, you can talk to me about that too. And then part of being um, an intern, um, I've got, um, once you successfully pass the background check, you get through the CDSA, I've got a list of, um, are the first 90 hours, is I've got a list of where you particularly go to each of the different departments, so you're familiar, you kind of get basic overview of the sheriff's office. Um, we just uh, meet with them, you have them sign off on it, you meet with me, and we can kind of shut your remaining 70 hours after that. Typically, it's done down at the jail. So I've got um, some intern applications if you guys are interested, and I also will hang around afterwards if you guys have additional, or additional questions or need some additional information for the sheriff's office. My name is Dr. Alexis Harper. I am the criminal justice planner for El Paso County. <laughs> Um, I do a lot of different things, actually. My, my workload is, is extremely diverse. Um, to give a little background about myself and why I'm so interested in spearheading the development of an internship, a justice internship program uh, within El Paso County, is um, that I uh, was previously employed as an assistant professor at a university in Texas. And so I, I fully understand from the student perspective what you need out of an internship. Um, and now that I work in a government agency, I want to make sure that you get that. Um, so <laughs> the government does a really good job of developing these enormous binders of things. Um, and there is a lot of really good stuff in here. But the beauty of how we're de excuse me, developing our internship is uh, we do have some interest in um, hiring paid and unpaid interns, uh, de depending on the level of qualification uh, and the duties and responsibilities that you would have. Um, but in general, we want to make sure that your internship is catered toward your interests as a student because I do work in a lot of different areas, and I'll tell you some more about that. So there's a lot of um, options, I think, for students with El Paso County in justice services. So specifically, I work in the community services and community outreach divisions uh, within the county. Um, as a criminal justice planner, one of my primary roles is to... Um, inform and assist the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council of the Pikes Peak Region. Uh, I'm an academic, a scholar, a researcher, and a data analyst. And so um, basically they say we have this problem um, and we want you to help us determine legal and evidence-based solutions to this problem, whatever that may be. Um, and so I, I go to the research, uh, the literature, the data, get data from the county, run different analyses, write various reports, um, and give real evidence-based policy recommendations for how things should change within the county. Um, and the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council actually is, is comprised of five different committees. Um, the council itself is made up of a, a variety of different community members um, and is chaired actually by the president of the Board of County Commissioners, Daryl Glenn. Um, it's made up of people from the district attorney's offices, public defender's offices, judges from the 4th Judicial District, uh, people in community corrections, probation and parole, um, individuals from pretrial services. Uh, pretrial services is specifically one of the committees under the CJCC. 
along with behavioral and mental health services and workforce development or workforce transitioning, right, for individuals that are coming back into the community from jail or prison. Um, and the idea is that those three committees uh, comprise the CJCC's um, active networks uh, for helping individuals who have criminal histories um, become uh, reintegrated uh, and um, restabilize as they join uh, the community again and they're moving past their, their criminal history, right? But we also have the Strategic Planning Committee, which oversees a lot of the uh, different things that these committees do, um, and the Financial Resources Committee, which helps find funding to support these various programs and practices, including grant writing, right? So I know it's, it's a lot to take in, but the beauty of uh, what we're trying to develop within El Paso County is um, a very, uh, immersive internship for students that maybe you have a variety of different interests and you want to work in different things to figure out where you really want to be in the field when you graduate. Um, we have opportunities for you to spend a certain number of hours or weeks across your internship um, with various divisions uh, or you can shadow me. Uh, I'm always all over the place involved in all of them. Uh, and I think primarily we would want our internship students to uh, help prepare for various meetings. You would be networking on a level um, that most students would never have the opportunity to do with various criminal justice officials and service providers in the county. Um, like I said, we're touching on a, a variety of different areas. And so really, the, the sky is the limit, I think. Um, and they're giving me the liberty to kind of develop this program as I see fit based on uh, what will be best for each individual student across every internship each semester. And so I, I want to make this moldable. I don't want it to be a, a structured hour by hour, here's what every intern is going to do forever type thing. I want you to talk to me about what it is that you're interested in doing and we will find a way um, to, to fit you uh, and fit the internship to you. Uh, which I think you know is, is interesting, um, and, I, and I hope that it's interesting to you. So um, I'll be here to hang out as well uh, for a little while if you have any more questions. Um, but in general, the CJCC's mission is to make recommendations about the criminal justice system in the Pikes Peak region um, to help develop a more effective and equitable criminal justice system in the area. Um, so let me know if anybody's interested. Good morning. I'm Gwen Stein, the Director of Volunteer Services from the District Attorney's Office. I'm just curious, how many of you are interested in pursuing advocacy as a role in a career? Okay. Or law? Any future attorneys? Uh, criminal justice, are you looking at law enforcement? Um, we have uh, 125 to 135 volunteers in our office typically. Um, we really love our UCCS students. Um, <clears throat> you will not just see things happening, you're going to get your hands dirty. You're going to be working on active cases, you're going to be working with victims of domestic violence. One of our awesome volunteers, Emma, is here. Um, she's an advocate in our fast track department. Uh, where we really do some of our restorative justice work. Um, so what we're about, um, it's not just prosecution, we do preventative justice programs, teaching young students who are in uh, fifth grade, how do you handle a scenario where you may be in a situation where suddenly you've gone to a party and it's going south? Um, excusing yourself without lo losing face, um, these are real things. How are you going to use your cell phone and internet, and do you know who you're talking to when you're on them? That's our preventative justice program. Our restorative justice programs are reaching out to people that are in the veterans court, helping them regain their life again, holding them accountable. Um, we have people that are working in our drug court as a liaison between our office and people who are really struggling, haven't committed a violent crime, but they are trying to get their life on track again. We have a lot of volunteers, probably the bulk of our volunteers are working with advocacy and our victims um, outreach in our fast track department, but also in our investigations department, which is a pretty interesting area. Um, we are sometimes trying to locate victims um, who 
really need to be able to have their voice heard. We're trying to find out if a person has committed a crime or not. Um, and we have our volunteers really engaged in that. We give you a high level of expectation and confidentiality that you will not discuss anything that you've seen, you've read, you've heard. Um, we also require that our volunteers um, do sign that confidentiality agreement. We also ask that you can be able to commit to a six month window. And the reason being is we will be able to train you. You're gonna know what you know. And we ask for at least eight hours of, week of volunteer time per week. Um, even if you've committed and you've done your 160 hours or more, we do ask for that. But you're gonna leave and you're gonna know your, your stuff. Um, the really cool thing is, is we do hire our volunteers. We probably hire uh, at least 10% every year. Some of our volunteers have gone on to become attorneys. Some of them have gone into law enforcement. I love, today I'll be going to see one of mine going into a promotion ceremony afterwards at the Air Force Academy. We just never know. There are people working in our IT department where they're going to be working in investigations, like I mentioned, advocacy, working in preventative justice, um, investigations. We have people that are working in our county court department. Um, and I have quite a few of job descriptions, if you'd like to see some of those positions that I do have open, and I am interning for, uh, looking for interns. And we do ask that you be at least 18. We do have a, um, there's just no flex on, you cannot be smoking marijuana, you can't be using it for medicinal. Um, it's an absolute, because we hold ourselves to the same requirement. Um, and that's one of those policies that in some agencies it may not be so strict, but in ours, because it's federally legal and we are under federal rule, we cannot flex on that. Um, I wanna just tell you that we have um, some great volunteers you, again, will get some hands-on. It will not be distant. You will be working on actual cases, helping to solve crime, helping victims. Um, we oversee all of the crime and all of the things that are happening from here all the way up to Teller County, so it's a very big jurisdiction. And we work hands-on with all of the agencies locally as well, police department, sheriff's department, state, and uh, some of the other federal agencies so it's a really interesting place, and if you'd like to join us, please come and meet with me. Um, like I said, I've got some, not all, but I've got many of the opportunities. If you're interested, please come and talk to me. I've got business cards, I've got some brochures. Hi, my name's Latonya Scott. I'm a probation officer and the director of volunteer services for the 4th Judicial District uh, Probation Department. Uh, I apologize, I woke up with my voice like this. I said to us, we'll have some fun. <laughs> so, um, the 4th Judicial Probation Department, we have El Paso and Teller County. Um, we are the individuals who supervise the, uh, the clients, probationers, offenders, um, the words used interchangeably within the office. Um, we supervise them. Um, and what we're trying to do is repair uh, community safety, uh, victim harm and safety, and rehabilitate um, offenders. What we want to do is, our goal is to be an alternative to incarceration. So we have um, misdemeanor cases and felony cases um, that we supervise um, within our, our office. Um, a part of the thing that a person does as a probation officer is um, you do all kinds of things. You do assessments to determine criminogenic needs, to determine, you know, is there mental health things going on here, substance use things, um, parenting, domestic violence, sex offenders, all of that we try to determine not only does the court or the judge order them to very specific conditions, but the court also trusts probation to impose the different things that we feel is necessary for the client based on um, clinicians' recommendations to help um, really um, get the client to understand the impact of their decisions, the impact of what they've done to their family, to the community, um, to the different victims, to themselves, and how they can do things in the future um, to change the course that their life is on and hopefully not go to um, jail or Department of Corrections. 
um, based on the assessments, you determine how often you meet with them. So our office, we have minimum level supervision up into intensive level supervision. Uh, and each one of those different types of categories comes with a different way that you supervise the client um, to whether you see them once a week with home visits, daily call-ins, um, down to minimum level supervision where you're seeing them about every six weeks. Um, we have a private probation office that we can refer some of our minimum cases out to. Specifically within the volunteer unit, we're looking at minimum and medium level supervision. Um, I also was part of, when I was in college, I did two internships. I did a sheriff's department and I did a probation department. And one of the things that was really important to me coming into this position was that, you know, I really wanted to make it something that we can customize to each person and that was very beneficial. I'm not exactly sure of every requirement outside of your hours, what you have to do, but I remember for myself, every day after you left, you would have to write, what did you do today? What did you learn about that? And there's only so many ways I could talk about filing papers or data entry <laughs> or something where I was like, well, I saw a discharge for theft class or something. So it's really important that um, when you're choosing your internship that you're really you know, challenging yourself and um, really be vocal about what it is that you want to get out of your internship, that you're having those conversations. We offer you the ability to, you get sworn in by our chief judge, um, Chief Judge Bain. Um, you take an oath and you um, get your little employee badge like the rest of us and you are a probation officer, a volunteer probation officer even though you're getting internship hours. Um, you get a caseload. You have people that, in the community of up to 30 people, where you are their probation officer. You are doing assessments. You are meeting with them. You are talking about the supports they need. You're doing sanctions. You're doing incentives. You are a probation officer. I think that's the coolest thing because you're actually doing the role super hands-on. Um, there's many different areas that um, you can do within um, probation. So we have a <coughs> domestic violence unit, we have specialty courts for domestic violence, we have veterans trauma court, um, heals courts, so substance abuse, mental health. Um, we have our sex offender unit, our juvenile unit, our standard adults with burglary theft, DUI, child abuse, um, domestic violence. If there is a case that can be placed on probation, we supervise it. And you have the opportunity to not only be in our designated area for volunteers, so you get your own desk and computer, um, you get your workstation, your telephone number that people can call you at and reach you, um, but you get access to any and everything that's within the courthouse. So um, you testify to the judge, you make recommendations on sentencing, you file paperwork to the court, um, you can request um, all of course with post supervision and, and training, but um, you can make requests for early termination of probation, for warrants to be issued for individuals. Um, you can sit with probation officers in any of the different units we have. Um, you can run those appointments for them. Um, once you get trained into that area, you get access to the SPARD system, so you can do learn how to do one of the fun things about our work is uh, everything you do gets documented, so you kind of learn that piece so that everything has to be in the system. So you, uh, you're going to learn the data entry piece and the human piece of building rapport and working with clients. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I think that's um, one of the funnest things is that you can do investigations, um, you can do, you can be in court and you're running those cases and um, you really get to feel and see what those conversations are like when you're talking to a real human being sit, sitting there with you and trying to figure out what is it that probation can do, what kind of services can we do, what are the things that they need, and how do you bridge those things together to get the person to where they want to, where they need to be to um, decrease those primitive needs and increase their social supports and their pro-social behaviors. And it's every day is different. Um, you, you, you think you have this type of case and you prep for this type of appointment, I'm gonna do a referral out for this and they come in and suddenly they're homeless or they've relapsed and so you learn that ability to be flexible and go with what the, cli what the client needs and what, um, what different services they need for that day. 
our volunteers and interns have gone on to be hired. Our department is constantly growing. Um, probably one of the most growing departments in the state. We usually have about one or two hiring boards a year where we're hiring five or six probation officers at a time. Um, we have new levels of structure of management coming in, so it just continues to grow. Um, we have people who went on to become law enforcement, to become attorneys, to become clerks with the judges, um, probation, they work with our private probation, um, just all kinds of things. We do ask for a six month commitment as well. Um, part of the reason that we ask for that is because we do believe in customer service and our clients are our customers as well. And we want to give them some level of stability with who their probation officer is. So you've been there and learning and training. Um, you get to see the whole breadth of what probation has to offer. Um, but then you're also a consistent person for the, for the client on probation. <coughs> Um, we ask of our um, volunteers that you commit to that six months. We do have background checks, we do interviews, um, and we ask that you have a learning spirit, um, that you really come to dive in and to, to really get the whole picture, um, to receive coaching, to receive feedback, um, advice, anything that you need. And we do ask that you come in with that learning spirit. Um, so I am, I as well as I'm going to be sticking around, um, again, hope you all could hear me. I'm Tammy Wagner, I'm with Keene City Police Department. Um, I don't know if all of you know where that's at, that's 45 miles southwest of here. Um, it's a small town, it's about 16, 17,000 in population. Uh, we have 38 sworn, 7 civilians. Uh, we do internships every single year. Uh, we're looking for those who want to intern, who have a positive you know, learning attitude, who want to come in and be a part of our agency. We do a background on there as well. We have an application process. Um, we also ask that you don't do any kind of drugs. Um, the background portion of it, I handle. Um, I do the support side, I'm a commander there. We have patrol and support. Patrol forces, patrol support handles everything else. Uh, investigations, canine, um, we handle training, records, PIO. It's, for a small agency, it's very diverse. And we have a forward-thinking chief who is really pushing us to be bigger. Um, with the 38 sworn that we have, we are down a few positions right now. We're in the process of hiring. So I'll also be sticking around for a few minutes afterwards. Um, but it's one of those things with that agency. We're heavily involved in the Homeless Coalition, Mental Health, other sides, very community-oriented policing <coughs> for a small town. Uh, we get busy during certain months of the year, especially during the summer. So we are really looking for people who want to be heavily involved in the community. Good morning, I'm Maria Griffith at Spring Creek Youth Services Center. I am a youth security specialist three there. To my left is Ms. Shakira Partner. She's a youth security specialist two, and she's gonna do our presentation. So basically, Spring Creek, our organization is uh, the detention facility for juveniles here in Colorado Springs. So we hold, hold all youth from, ages from 10 to 17. We are a 51 bed facility, so we can hold up to 51 youth. Um, that come to our facilities. Sometimes they're they're in detention because the court sentences them for 45 up to 45 days, or they're waiting for a group home or out of placement home or organization. Um, sometimes they're there waiting for their trial to start or until they get sentenced. Um, we have four male units and one female unit. Typically, we have ranging now from like 10 to 13 youth on each unit. Um, there is two staff on each of those units, so you have a partner if you're working there. Um, for interns, um, we are looking for someone that um, can do data collection. Um, you can shadow the pod staff on the units, so you can kind of see like what it is to kind of be like a correctional officer dealing with the youth. Um, also, there'll be stuff like you can do upstairs, paperwork, filing, that kind of stuff as well. Um, if you're interested in um, employment, um, everyone's qualified. As long as you're 21, um, all you need is a high school diploma for the entry level position. Um, if you have education, if you are done with your bachelor's degree after this year, you can apply for one of our super resident positions. Um, all you need for a two is, I think, I believe, two work year, years of experience in corrections and from three, three years. So all you need is a high school diploma. So hopefully you guys are interested in coming work at our agency. 
Again, I'm Manny Roldot. This is Higgins. Higgins. Uh, we're criminal investigators with the Colorado Public Defender's Office. Uh, in a minute here, I'm going to pass it along to uh, Higgins so she can uh, give you some of the requirements for internship. But uh, we basically uh, investigate criminal crimes, uh, everything from misdemeanor to homicides. That include traffic, uh, all the way up to homicide cases. Uh, we also do juvenile cases and economic crime cases. Uh, so if you're interested, come on down. So we work for the public defender's office, so obviously that means we're representing those who are alleged to have commit a crime. Um, so like you said, we're both investigators, so there's like a wide variety of things that we do day to day. Um, mostly make phone calls and interview people like, regard, in regards to the case. Um, we can make on scene views, we can do evidence views, we go to the jail to see the clients, we go to Spring Creek to see clients. Um, we pretty much can do, like, like I said, anything and everything that may be relevant to the case. Um, and as an intern, you have the ability... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, as an intern, you have the ability to like shadow all of us investigators. There's 18 of us in our office. Um, so like, if you're around for a long time, and we're pretty flexible, um, I think we spend like 10 to 15 hours a week or whatever, you can make work with your schedule. Um, but if you're around for a long time, you can have the chance to like shadow like the bigger cases, like you said. Like almost all of our investigators have a homicide case. Um, and they're pretty intensive and kind of cool to shadow like, to see what goes on and what that type of case would entail to do investigation on. Um, you can also shadow other cases which would be like sitting on interviews or like there's a lot of times we can go look at the evidence in the case um, usually at the DA's office. I mean those are sometimes pretty cool to sit in and watch. Um, what else? I mean, uh, you know, you gotta be motivated. You know, it's one of those jobs that sometimes we ask you to do things that have hours. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So <coughs> a lot of the, one of the other things that you can do is serve subpoenas, which is it can be fun sometimes when people don't want to get served, but sometimes <laughs> that has to happen not during the day-to-day -day workout, like 8 to 5, so that might be like, oh, 7 p.m., can you run and serve the subpoena? Oh, okay. Um, but like I said, it's fun. You have to be open-minded. Driver's license, please. Oh, yes. Because um, I'm trying to think about it. I mean, we'll stick around so you can come ask us questions, but that's basically what we do. And we also all us by doing <laughs> Good morning. I'm Sheree Hasser from TI Probation. I'm the supervisor there. I have been there for almost seven years. We are a private probation company that contracts with the state probation. We um, have contracted with the state for over 20 years. We supervise about a thousand cases, sorry, 2,000 cases that consist of minimum risk and medium risk offenders. We have 11 probation officers in the office. Each probation officer has about 200 cases um, that consist of domestic violence, felony, DUI, and misdemeanors. We also run specialty caseloads that consist of sex offender caseloads, ICOTS caseloads, and vet court. Um, to, I also brought a couple of probation officers with me, which we'll be talking to you in just a second. To be an intern, um, you do have to pass a background check, and you'll pretty much just be um, shadowing the probation officers um, from anywhere to filing paperwork, taking phone calls, attending court, completing documents uh, that go over to the court, um, writing narratives, and running appointments um, with the defendants. Once you have graduated, with the bachelors, um, we do hire a lot of our volunteers, interns. I'm hiring right now, and I have about five people who have volunteered with probation somewhere that are interviewing this week. So if you are interested in a career with probation, it is a good idea to um, start off as an intern with probation. Hi, my name is Crystal Atkins. I'm a probation officer with TI Probation. Um, I graduated from UCCS last year uh, with my bachelor's in criminal justice. I started out as a volunteer um, with LaTanya, and I got hired on to TI in March of this year. 
Um, I supervise about 200 cases, DUI, DV, um, it varies. Um, probation, my job as a probation officer is to ensure that the defendants are meeting the conditions imposed by the judge. Um, I also am there to provide resources. A lot of these people are struggling. Um, sometimes probation is just not for everybody, and so you end up having to go back to court, so that's part of my job as well. Um, TI is a, honestly a great place to start. If you're in your last two years of your undergrad um, and you're looking for a job, it's a really good place to get your foot in the door. A lot of people that are now at the state have started at TI. Um, it gets you a lot of good experience. You handle a lot of cases, so you know all the paperwork. Um, and you, you would be able to work closely with an officer and kind of see how things uh, are done in the court system. Um, see how they represent themselves in court and go from there. I'm Lauren. I'm a probation officer at TI Probation. I graduated from UCCS. Can I hear? Um, I graduated from UCCS in May 2017, and I was hired on with TI Probation in July of 2017. Um, I also volunteer with Latanya as well. Um, I currently supervise 205 cases. I supervise felony misdemeanor cases, domestic violence cases, um, DUI cases, and interstate cases, which is a specialty caseload. Um, so interstate basically involves supervising cases from cases that were transferred from other states to Colorado to be supervised. So that's really interesting to see how other states' permissions work. And we do a lot of different paperwork that you don't do for the Colorado cases, so you get to learn a whole lot more. Um, so my role as a probation officer at TI Probation is I supervise the clients every 30 to 60 days based on their risks and needs. Um, I help the clients find resources that are court-ordered and also not court-ordered, so if they're dealing with substance abuse, I refer them to them. Um, and during the appointments I have with them, I just follow up on their progress and their completions, and if they're not doing what they're supposed to, we go back to court. And my role as a probation officer in court is to give recommendations for the judge for sentence options. Um, and I just really enjoy being a probation officer, so I get to watch all my clients change and make progresses in their life. And that's awesome. Well, my name is Eric Groskopf. I'm the volunteer and operations director with Colorado Springs Teen Court. And Teen Court is an independently owned and operated nonprofit organization. We're not officially part of the state or the city or the court. We obviously work with the court, but we are our own independent entity, nonprofit organization. What we technically are is an alternative sentencing program for first-time misdemeanor juvenile offenders. And we see kids as young as 10 years old and as old as 18 or 19 in certain cases if they're still in high school. And we handle all kinds of offenses, ranging from shoplifting, theft, fighting, harassment, assault, possession, alcohol, marijuana, trespassing, fireworks, loitering, all kinds of fun stuff. And basically, if these kids are eligible for our program, they could come through two different ways. Um, we handle between three and 400 cases every year. Um, about half of them are ticketed into municipal court, and they receive a six-month deferred sentence through the court, then they proceed to team court for their sentencing. The other half of the kids that we see are direct referrals from the schools in lieu of formal criminal charges. So they could have gotten a ticket for something, but they didn't. They were referred to us directly from the school. The cool part about what we do, though, as far as the sentencing goes, is that all of our teen defendants are all sentenced by other teenagers. So we have between three and 400 defendants every year. Um, but in addition to that, we also see about 150 to 200 student volunteers that are 13 to 18 years old that come down to the courthouse and hear these cases individually every month, and they're the ones that do the sentencing. Uh, most of our defendants come through what's known as the peer panel process. Um, that's where we take three to six of our student volunteers plus one or two of our adult case managers, which as an intern, you would have the opportunity to be a case manager during peer panels. And you guys would interview, the panel interviews the defendants and their parents separately, and that's when they get to know the kid as a whole person because we're trying to raise these kids as a whole person. We're not trying to put a Band-Aid on a broken leg because 99% of the time, there are underlying issues going on with these kids that cause them to go out and do what they do. So uh, the reason we have the panels interview the kids and their parents separately is because when mom or dad is not sitting next to that kid, they will tell the panel of student volunteers absolutely everything because as teenagers, 
they all connect on that level that we as adults just can't quite connect at. So they will have no problem opening up, and that gives the panel the chance to come up with the most appropriate sentence based on what that kid needs. So everything we do, it's all based on the concepts of restorative justice, which is very big on owning up to what you did and taking accountability for your actions. It also focuses on competency development because we want these kids to learn from what they did so that they end up coming out of the program as better people um, that are more educated about how their choices and their actions have consequences, not just on them and their parents and their lives, but also on the community as a whole. So all of our sentencing options are meant to help these kids repair the harm that was done. Um, the more serious cases that we see are put on a teen court trial, and that's just a more formal type of sentencing hearing. An example of a more serious case that we would see several years ago, we had one young lady who was running her own shoplifting school and she was charging her friends $20 each and taking them on field trips to the Citadel Mall and showing them where to go and when to go and how to remove the tags without getting inked in the face and all of this. She was running her own little side business. So she was a little entrepreneur, but probably shouldn't have been in that particular line of work. So her and her three pupils were put on a team for trial case. And those are handled by our student attorneys, the same uh, student volunteers that uh, volunteer for the <coughs> They've completed some additional training to become student attorneys. So we have a defense team, a prosecution team. They each work with real lawyers from here in the local legal community who volunteer as mentor attorneys during the trials themselves. We have real judges from Fourth Judicial Court, um, District Court, and occasionally Municipal Court who volunteer to preside over our trials. And the jury who is responsible for deciding the sentence or sentences for the kid or kids on a teen court trial is made up of all of the little offenders that have been sentenced within the last month or so. Because one requirement of every kid in the program, they have to come back and serve a teen court jury duty. So they come back, they hear a case of a real kid, something a bit more serious, and then they are given the chance to turn into 12 angry men. And oh my goodness, they get into that, let me tell you. And as an intern, you would have the chance to go in with the jury and watch them deliberate and help them, guide them to a sentence recommendation for that kid on trial. Um, you know, in addition to us keeping track of our defendants and um, having our volunteers come, we have hundreds of kids and volunteers. We have dozens of adults in different capacities. Um, we have police officers. We have members of the community who come in, um, several volunteers for our life skills program. Um, all of our high school kids go through a life skills class, and that's where they learn about physical health and safety and unhealthy and healthy communication and goal setting, long term, short term, uh, managing their money, uh, what's the difference between a savings account and a checking account, and a credit card and a debit card. Um, we also teach them that a credit card is not a magical piece of plastic with endless money on it. Um, the older kids go on to do some work with building resumes. Um, you know, searching for jobs, preparing for job interviews, what to do and what not to do. And then the last part of the class, they act actually practice doing mock job interviews with volunteers from the community. So if you're able to, if you were to become an intern with us and your schedule lines up where you could be in our life skills class, that's probably the most hands-on work that we do. Um, you know, and with us being a nonprofit organization as well, we also have to have fundraising events throughout the year because all the funding for the program, we have to go out and find through grants and donations and fundraising events and stuff like that. So there are only four of us on staff. I wish we had the money to offer paid internships, but unfortunately with us being a nonprofit, we just aren't able to accommodate that. Um, but we can provide you with all kinds of experience and you're getting a chance to help these kids and I promise you, you will never, ever, ever be bored. I can't make up the stuff that some of these kids are doing and they're not all bad kids, they're just being really, really good. <coughs> you know, they need someone positive to be a role model for them. Um, you know, for example, especially these days in Colorado with marijuana being what it is, um, we have a lot of these kids that think that mom or dad's medical marijuana card, their love card, <coughs> applies to the whole family, kind of like the King Supers card. It doesn't. You're 12. You're not old enough to have that. Uh, my favorite, this last year, we had two boys from, I think they were in eighth grade from one of the middle schools. They decided to fight each other to see who was the more macho, manly man. 
And they decided to make this whole vote thing set up on Snapchat, so all of their friends went on and voted for who was the manlier fighter. And the video of that fight was outrageously entertaining. But, uh, like I said, these children of the corn, they're not all bad kids. They're just young people who make mistakes, and you'll get to work directly with them as an intern in our office, constantly on the phone with the kids and their parents, reminding them to come to these classes, reminding them to turn their stuff in. Um, You'll get to sit with them in the classes. Um, in the classes, when they talk about their lives and what they did, that's when you really get to learn what these kids are going through. Because a lot of them come from very broken homes, broken families, uh, broken households, single mom, single grandma households. Um, the younger boys that we see, a lot of those boys don't have a positive male role model figure in their life. So gentlemen, as an intern, you would get a chance to work with these little you know, 10, 11, 12 year old kids. A couple of years ago, we had a little 10 year old boy who was ticketed for harassment, for excessive ding dong ditching because he had a crush on the little girl who lived across the street from him. So, like I said, can't make this up. You'll never be bored. Um, if you're interested in applying, I'll stick around afterwards to answer any questions you might have. We're taking applications for the spring semester, the summer semester um, of next year. Um, and how you would apply, you would obviously go through Ms. Henrika. She would send your info to us. We would call you and schedule an interview. And if we do accept you as an intern with Team Court, um, we would obviously have you complete a background check because obviously we work with kids. Um, we'd also have you do um, this online security training uh, because our office is in the probation department. We're required to do the same training that they are. Um, and we're based out of the municipal courthouse <coughs> on Iowa Street. Um, we would also have you get fingerprinted, which is another protocol in municipal court, and we would have you complete a pre-employment uh, drug screening. Um, and then we would look at your schedule and get your hours in um, with the understanding that we would have you until the end of the semester, so we would probably end up working a little more than the 160. Um, and I can also tell you that I was exactly where you guys are right now, because I started in the program as an intern. I graduated from UCCS about eight years ago. And currently, right now, of our four staff, three of our four staff are all former UCCS interns. So um, come check us out, and I'll stick around uh, and answer any questions you have. I promise you'll never be bored, and these kids do change in the time that we have them. So. Hello, uh, my name is Travis Corbinetti, and I'm here with the Federal Probation Office. We are just like the State Probation Office and the State Parole Office in that we work with offenders in the community. Um, in Colorado, there is only one federal probation office, and it's located in Denver. And we have a satellite office here in Colorado Springs. Um, our main office has about 43 officers. Here in Colorado Springs, we only have five officers. We have a two-man team in Grand Junction and a one-man office in Durango. We, um, Nationally, there are 94 federal districts that include uh, Guam, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Uh, and some of your larger states, like Texas and California, have multiple uh, probation departments because they have an eastern and a western and northern and southern district. Our office has essentially three main divisions. We have our pretrial division, those folks will conduct interviews and assessments on anyone who's been indicted on a federal crime. Uh, we will create a mini report for the judge, uh, which will include uh, information regarding to ties to the community, if they're a flight risk or a danger. And then we're gonna make a recommendation whether that person should be released on bond, and if so, if they should be supervised by our office. Our second division is our pre-sentence investigation officers. These guys uh, do extensive reports on individuals after they've entered a plea of guilty or have been found guilty on trial. Uh, these reports cover uh, a detailed account of the offense that took place, uh, that individual's prior criminal history, uh, their family, marital, social history, um, whether there are substance abuse or mental health concerns, and then finally employment and financial matters and then on top of that, we're going to provide the court uh, various sentencing options that are available per statute and guidelines, and then we're going to offer a, a recommendation for sentence. And then our third division, which is our largest division, is our supervision officers. 
And like I said, we have one office for the state of Colorado and we supervise every federal offender in the state of Colorado all, all the way to each border. Uh, the majority of the folks we work with are releasing from the Bureau of Prisons. Uh, we do have a handful of straight probation cases and then we also provide supervision for military parole folks. As an intern, uh, unfortunately, we would ask that you work in our Denver office just because our Denver office is connected to the federal courts. It's large, it offers much more as, as far as opportunities to shadow those officers. Uh, our only halfway house that we contract with right now is in Denver and the majority of our team agencies are in Denver. Our goal uh, is one, is protection of the community. Two, uh, our officers are trying to avoid change in uh, these individuals' thinking and behavior. Uh, it's cheaper for everybody if these folks get through the system and on those productive lives. And then lastly, we, we enforce any poorer conditions. As far as internships, you must have a senior undergraduate status and at least a 3.0 uh, GPA. Uh, we would ask that you work at least a minimum of 10 hours per week and no less than one semester and no longer than one year. Um, again, uh, you'll have to have a background check and be fingerprinted. Uh, you must be eligible to work for the federal government. And if you're interested, I'll be hanging around. I've got a contact for our program coordinator in Denver. Hi everyone, I'm Jean Krause and I'm from the Colorado Springs Police Department here to tell you a little bit about internship opportunities at CSPD and also with me today because we know many of you are interested in careers at CSPD is Officer Nick Ryman who will be talking in a few minutes as well and he's the department recruiter. We'll tell you a little bit about internships and getting your foot in the door, and then Nick will be able to take it from there and tell you about um, hopefully future careers with our department. So CSPD serves the city of Colorado Springs. You heard earlier about the county. So this is the city of Colorado Springs. Uh, there's about a thousand employees, excuse me, in the department. There's about a thousand employees in the department and it's about two thirds, one third. So that's the ratio of sworn to civilian. Our internship opportunities are actually in both of those areas. So for those of you that are interested in law enforcement, but not necessarily a sworn officer, we have some of those opportunities as well. We have two main bureaus. We have the operations bureau and our patrol bureau. There's a main operations center downtown Colorado Springs where many of our interns work, but we also have internship opportunities at all four of the patrol bureaus, and there's one in each quadrant of the city. If you divide it into four squares, you could work in any of those. So geographically, if that's more convenient for you, we try and take that into consideration as well. So some examples in our operations support bureau include our investigations division, that's where we have our financial crimes unit, our robbery unit, our victims unit, um, in our strategic information center, our human trafficking unit, and so many others. And in all of those, depending on your specific focus and areas of interest, we would be able to consider you for internships in there as well. Then in our four patrol bureaus, each bureau has a property crimes investigations unit. We have crime prevention units and several others that we could introduce you to, including a civilian unit called community service officers. These are sworn officers, but they're civilians. So we have internship opportunities available in all of those. And we would work with you again on your areas of interest. So when you're filling out the applications, working with Rod Walker, telling him about your interest in an internship, that's what we're looking at. We're reading those through very carefully because we want to learn about you and what is of interest to you as well. Regardless of the bureau that you would do your internship in, we will get you out on ride-alongs. There's a minimum of two required. And while you can do some of those during the day when it's a nice day like this outside, we're going to get you out on what officers call those fun shifts, you know, like midnight to 3 a.m. 
downtown Colorado Springs where it's happening on Friday night. Yeah, that's kind of the experience we'd like you to have so that you really have an understanding of the role of law enforcement officers. We also are going to ask that you do ride-alongs with those civilian officers. Again, because it's a great opportunity for you to maybe get a foot in the door and see if this is the career for you as well as the agency that you might be interested in. So all of those things we take into consideration when we sit down with you and go through the onboarding application. Now, Rod Walker has all of our paperwork for CSP as part of your internship packets on your uh, internship panel, I believe, on the UCCS site. So once you are working with him and he has approved you for internship, your whole packet comes to us ready to go. We send you in for our background report, similar to all the other agencies that I described today. In addition, we'll sit down with you in an in-person interview. And we have the same um, enforcement of the use of marijuana or any illegal drug. And it's exactly the same as if you were applying for a position at CSPB. Absolutely zero. 18 months. And so that is something that is talked about not only in your onboarding interview and paperwork, but in the polygraph that we will be putting you through as well. So those are our onboarding steps. It takes us about 60 days from the time we receive paperwork until we get the applications approved in our department because of sheer volume coming through between our volunteers and our interns. Now I skate out all the interns to the front of the line. Rod and I work very closely because we know that you're on the clock. You have timelines as well, and we'll do everything we can to help support those. In terms of capacity, we are filled already for your spring semester. So plan your internships if you are looking at CSPD for summer of 2019, and then Rod can help you back that train up on what that paperwork timeline. So like the others, I'm happy to stay here and answer any questions and tell you a little bit more specifics about working at CSPD. We love having you. We love having interns come in, being able to work shoulder to shoulder with our sergeants and our detectives. You'll be solving cases, you'll be filing cases, you'll be working with them, you'll be out riding with them. Like Weinstein said, you're going to roll up your sleeves and get dirty with us. And we love it because we want you to consider us for the future. So with that, I'm going to pass it to Nick Rowland and Officer Rowland, and he can tell you a little bit more about what happens after your internship. So thank you. I'm uh, Officer Rowland with Colorado Springs Police Department. I've been a police officer here for 13 years. Um, most of that's been on patrol, but I also was part of our accident investigation team and um, major accident call out unit. Um, I am, like I said, the recruiter for the department. Um, kind of the big thing I wanted to say real quick, if, if, if any of you are interested, which looked like you were in law enforcement, you need to start early as far as the application process. Um, it takes a lot because most agencies do a pretty extensive background check. So for us right now, um, we're not opening applications until probably April of next year. And uh, I'm guessing that academy won't start until January 2020. Um, you can apply while you're still in school and all that, uh, you know, working for your you know, bachelor's or associate's or whatever you're, you're going for. Um, you just need to be ready to uh, be done by the time the start date of the academy is. So again, with whatever agency you're looking at, I would highly recommend that you get in contact with your recruiter, see when they're hiring and when the processes go and how many processes a year they, they do so you can prepare and not have a big old um, open lap space where you're kind of freaking out about what you're going to do with your life. So, um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, that's kind of the big thing. Um, I'll be here um, afterwards if you have any specific questions. Um, but yeah, good luck with everything and uh, thanks for having us. Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Steve Free. I'm uh, with the 18th Judicial District Probation Department based out of Arapahoe, Elbert, Lincoln, and Douglas Counties. Uh, we, I'm one of two volunteer coordinators that we have in our department. And we have currently 31 either interns or people that are volunteering from the community that have come through our program. Uh, the supervise close to around 275 cases. Well, I know we're at home, it's a little bit far from where you guys are currently at. So 
we're available um, only three days out of the week for volunteering. We're open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for our volunteers. Um, if you choose to want to volunteer with us, our program would assign you a caseload. That caseload will be anywhere between 10 cases up to 25 cases that you would be responsible for. And I'm not going to repeat a lot of stuff about what Tanya talked about earlier because we do have some similarities to what they do here in the fourth. Um, our program has been around for quite some time. And um, when I first graduated college, actually I did my internship for Deputy Sheriff's, for Sheriff's Department. And I couldn't stand it. I did not like it at all. I don't think I was thick skinned enough or was ready to at that point work in law enforcement. So when I graduated, I, I moved back to Colorado and I happened to look at this thing that they used to have, it's called a newspaper. And I was looking for work. And in there it said, hey, do you want to be a deputy probation officer? And I said, sure, I have no idea what that is. Well, I went down and interviewed and, got, uh, and they said, sure, come on, you can volunteer for us. And that was in 1996. I volunteered for a little over a year, uh, worked prior probation for a short period of time, and then 19 years later, I'm still a probation officer in the same judicial district. One of the advantages you have with all of the here today is kind of figuring out where you want to be in your career. And I will tell you, volunteering with us or with whoever maybe gives you that opportunity to, to at least test the waters, to see if it's what you want to do. Those of you that I saw raise your hand and said you want to do law enforcement, that's great. Volunteer, find out if that's what you want to do. If you don't, look at look at probation because we're not we're not out we're not out on the streets. We are a program that gives you the opportunity to sit down and meet with clients and work with clients that have already been processed through the system. We don't deal with clients that are on parole very often. Most of ours are all pre prison sentences. We would, super, we would supervise cases that have been determined but through an assessment process to be able to consider a lower risk offender, which means they either are first time offenders coming through the system or they've been in the system for quite some time and already done enough to show that they've been compliant where we can lower the requirements for them to come in. Volunteering with us or doing an internship with us uh, we give you an opportunity to learn how to do assessments to assess the client's risks and needs. An opportunity to write reports to the courts, make recommendations, also tell, tell the courts when clients are doing good or doing poorly, requesting warrants. Uh, we do ask for a three hour a week minimum commitment for one year. Now those of you that have internships that would be done in a short period of time or a certain period of time that have exact number of hours, we'll work with you in regards to that. But we do ask for the one year commitment because you are working with clients. And we want them to not be shift, you know, shift from one person to another very quickly so they can have an opportunity to build before learn pro-social behavior from clients or from the volunteers or probation officers. Our program, we believe, is the biggest in the state and we've been around for since like 1986. I know you guys are looking at me going, oh, you must have one of the first ones. No, I've not been there since the start. <laughs> but I was there when the program was smaller. Now we have a large number of volunteers. Uh, the application process is the same you would do if you're applying for a job for the state. You can go to the state judicial website. On our, on our website would be yeah, a job description of the deputy probation officers, De deputy probation officer program in, our, in the 18th judicial district. You complete that application process. We would review that, then we would schedule you for an interview. Our, uh, after completing the interview, if you're approved, we require you to complete a background check. Simply, you would just sign a piece of paper saying we send that off to the state and they determine your appropriateness uh, for a program. You do have to be 18 years or older. Uh, and then once our program begins, we start volunteering, we would put you through what we call a training academy. It's a 30 hour program. 30 hour training where we teach you how to use assessments, how to talk to clients, how to be safe with what you do, uh, protecting your own personal information, everything that's out there. Uh, then you would come, then after that was over with, we would assign you a case that you would work with. And uh, certain, uh, certain things that we would do that may come up, you may be able to work individually with another probation officer in a specialized case load. That could be anything determined, uh, determined from working with a specialty court including mental health, veterans court, uh, drug and alcohol, or drug court. Uh, it could be also that you're going to help out in an administrative case. So maybe you just, as you're volunteering with us, you realize you don't like to talk to clients or that you're not comfortable with it. So we do have some administrative type caseloads where you would be monitoring clients in other states, other judicial districts, and you would help process the paperwork and help 
assist them. If you volunteered with us, you, you would survive. Yeah, you would. You <laughs> probably should survive. You would supervise, uh, you would supervise caseloads with a, with a wide variety. The only thing you would not supervise are currently uh, juveniles or uh, cases that are on for a current sex offense. Uh, you would supervise misdemeanors and felonies within our program. If you're interested, myself and my partner Stacy will be here afterwards. Please come up and talk to us. We can talk more about the program and what that looks like. We also have an open program, so you can start a program with us at any point. We don't have, very rarely we close down around the holidays, we'll be closed down before we take anybody new for volunteering. But year round, you can apply with us. And I really encourage you guys to take a look at everything that's here to determine what you want to go with your careers. I'm going to go ahead and let Stacy introduce herself. If you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to come talk to us. So I'm the other half of the DPO coordinator for the um, 18th Judicial District, so that's just north of here. I'll just um, quickly add on to what Latanya and Steve had already talked about. Um, there's a lot of intricacies with working with people. You never know what you're going to get. You probably will survive. I mean, Steve's been here for 19 years. Um, you get to do a lot of, like he said, assessments. It's really cool to work with treatment providers. I was kind of on the border in college of if I wanted to do criminal justice or like human services and probation just kind of came together at that perfect like melting point for me. Um, there's a lot of collaboration, not just with the treatment providers and with the clients, but also with their families and Department of Human Services. Um, and then again, like Steve had touched on, if you're not exactly sure what you want to do, um, this would be a great place to, to start out, right? We're asking for three hours a week. If you love it, then, then great. We want to do everything we can to support you and your goals. And if not, then that's fine, too. I mean, it's really it's not for everybody. So thank you so much for your time. We're going to be here until um, 1.30. My name is Judith Costell, and I'm the volunteer recruitment uh, manager for CASA of the Pikes Peak region. And CASA is Court Appointed Special Advocate we recruit uh, citizen volunteers, we train, and those volunteers work hand in hand with children that are already in the child welfare system as uh, victims of either abuse or neglect. So, <coughs> bear with me. Um, how many know about the child abuse hotline in El Paso County? How many have ever heard of it? I just throw out some numbers of how many calls you think that hotline received just last year for incidents? Anybody? 200? One more number. 1,000? It was actually 17,000, that's comma zero, zero, for El Paso County alone. It's the largest in the state. Um, as far as why, it's very complex. But what we do is work with children from ages zero to 18 or 21, and we are on what we think might be the preventative side, working with children that need help to navigate, as well as have hope for a future based on being a victim and maybe coming out of it. So our work um, includes the fourth judicial district, any of the first responders. We get kids after the fact they weren't even placed there's a uh, court order of protection with the child. They've been removed from the dangerous situation. They've had the physical. They've encountered everything that you could imagine that would be traumatic for them. And then what happens? We try to put the pieces back together. We try to help them navigate. <coughs> we also give them a glimmer to what might happen in the future. So our agency is a nonprofit. We do have some government funding, but if some of these other um, internships are full, this might be a way for criminal justice students to look at the psychology and the sociology of domestic violence and that trickle-down effect. So it can be really interesting to learn. Um, this work is a deep dive into the family dynamics and consequences of domestic violence in our community, our neighbors, the person standing behind you in the grocery store, at the post office. This is about us. And that's why I love what I'm seeing in here because there's wishers, thinkers, and dreamers, and then there are doers. This room is full of doers from everyone in here who wants to do something to this team and this panel that does something every day. I'm really proud to be here and honored.
So we do that deep dive into domestic violence. Students have an opportunity to understand that trickle-down effect of TV, domestic violence, to children and families, long-term, short-term outcome, and how the CASA works hand-in-hand -hand with the criminal justice system, first responders, Department of Human Services, and many other resources, uh, psychologists, counselors, and educators. Uh, with the teams in Colorado Springs that serve the families and communities in Colorado. So how do you get involved? You have to be 18 to be what's called a SEPT, which is Supervised Exchange Parenting Time Intern. We ask that you serve six months. Uh, we can coordinate with your curriculum. This is a way for you to learn and help uh, families and children have safe visitation. Uh, someone in the family has a court order of protection, but these children and, and family members are trying to get better and want to maintain relationships. This is a safe place to do it. CASA advocacy, where you actually work one-on-one -on -one with the child, that is a longer commitment. Uh, you have to think about that. You have to be 21. The, you serve the term of the case, which can be eight, anywhere from 12 to 24 months, and that's for the stability of the child. We serve the child at the convenience of the child. Um, if there is an interview uh, application, full background check, full fingerprint registry because you have direct access with children. You go to court, you prepare court reports. Um, it is a very impactful. The outcome may not look the way you want it to, but your connection with the child, I will guarantee, is life changing. <coughs> um, and I have personal stories about that, but we can share more. If you're interested, please come see me. I'll help you navigate, and you will be connected with what eventually will become a career in either law enforcement or some type of service for your community. And I applaud you, and I thank you. Good morning. My name is Larry Turner. I work for the Colorado Department of Corrections and our uh, Intel Division. Lieutenant Ewan Lynn and I work for a task force called the Newton. So we monitor gangs and security threat groups and do with our inmates who have gone through all these programs up here and end up in prison. Part of the internship will expose you to all the different agencies we work with, federal, state, local level, and then within our department, if you're interested in forensic psychology, or research, or plan of analysis, or prison operations. We'll take you on, on some tours, take you through some prisons. You'll realize it's not like Netflix, which is not to be black, it's uh, <laughs> Halloween around the corner, but there's a reality of what you see firsthand in whatever internship program you have and what you see on the media. On a personal note, I started my internship in probation many years ago, probably before Bob and you were born, and seeing how frustrated and uh, overworked and how hard those jobs were, I decided to go work in a prison somewhere and have an easier deal. So my hat's off to one of you that work in probation is an uh, endless task, but it gives you such a broad spectrum and uh, kind of an appreciation for the criminal justice system. Whatever internship you decide on, you're going to be part of our criminal justice system. Prosecutors, public defenders, probation, all the way. We're all in together. We're glad to see you guys out here. Lieutenant Newman, give you more details about our internship. But good luck to all of you. As, as Captain Turner said, I'm Lieutenant Newman. I've been with the department for seven years, but I'm an officer for five. Um, in our unit, the interns, we've really changed what we do. We used to basically, it was filing and stuff and now we have interns working hands on on products that are not only distributed through our facilities and parole but also um, to other agencies. Our intern, two interns ago, she was producing products that we handed over to the FBI to help them with the cases. So um, we we really tried to make it customized to you what's going to be in your interest. Um, much like Captain Turner, I started with Department of Corrections on a one-year plan to just get experience, and I'm still here. So um, we can really expose you to what you want in corrections if that's the field you're interested in see this, if that's what you want to go um, We'll stick around, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free. So as you can see, there is a vast amount of unbelievable experience in the room in terms of the different representatives from different agencies. And you can see that there's also so many opportunities. We have some UCSS alumni here who have gotten jobs from their internships, maybe not with that specific agency, but with the different agencies. 
and there are lots of people who have done internships with the different agencies that have also ended up working for those agencies. So that's absolutely amazing. I learned some things by just listening to you guys. So thank you so much for all of your wisdom and thank you so much for coming. So now I'm going to turn the tables to you students. So please ask some questions. Please be praying. Ask any questions. There are no stupid questions. I know that you hear this over and over and over again, but that's so true. I want you to ask questions so everybody can hear answers to it before we we'll, you know, close the formal board so that you can mingle one-on-one -on -one with these amazing uh, individuals from these different agencies. But first, please be brave and ask some questions so everybody can hear answers. So, go for it. So as you can see, the, the requirements vary largely, agency by agency. And what I also forgot to tell you is that Colorado Springs PD, El Paso County Sheriff's Office, and Fort Churiso DA's Office, uh, all those will be will fall under the responsibility of Mr. Rod Walker. And then everybody else who is represented in this room, I would be the contact person that you, that you, would, you would go through me for all those. Any other questions? I know that there is, so just please be praying. We are not going to buy. <laughs> are not paid, but yeah, so sometimes very rarely, yeah. occasionally, there might be an opportunity for paid internship. So do you want to elaborate on that? Sure. So I have been the criminal justice planner with the county since July. And uh, being that the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council just recently came back together uh, a little more than a year ago, um, there's a, there's a lot of room for upper mobility, I think. Like, um, you know, they're giving me a lot of liberties to help determine what this internship sh should look like. Um, and I think that we have opportunities for paid internships based on uh, the uh, degree of responsibility that you would have. Um, and like I said, I mean, our, our internship really, we're, we're open to allowing you to kind of cherry pick the area that you might be interested in working within the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council or Justice Services for the county uh, because we do have so many different opportunities. Um, and, and so the CJCC, for example, uh, what I've been working on primarily is the development of a three-year action plan. And so I would like to see an intern that would be interested in working with some of the committees to oversee the execution of some of their objectives in 2019 uh, that have been outlined in this action plan. So what that looks like a little bit is uh, jail diversion, right? So in pretrial services, we would have people working to help determine risk levels for individuals that might receive uh, personal recognizance bonds um, to help get people out of jail faster, especially individuals that may be considered special populations that shouldn't be in jail, that maybe need to be with service providers outside of jail, behavioral and mental health services, other kinds of health services, uh, veteran services, right? We're also looking at hosting a behavioral and mental health and criminal justice summit in early 2019. Um, so there would be a, a large degree of developing a guest list for who would be invited to that summit. Um, working in uh, meeting planning, um, all kinds of uh, uh, 
the development of like flyers and handouts and things that we would have, um, event planning in general for uh, what we hope would be the first annual Behavioral Health and Criminal Justice Summit in El Paso County. Um, and we're working with the Pikes Peak Region and Workforce Centers to develop curriculum that can help uh, individuals with criminal health histories develop their resumes or social etiquette skills or uh, how to um, properly conduct yourself in a job interview, right? Um, to help, again, with this idea that uh, we don't want you to recidivate, right? And so, um, really, you know, we're pretty open uh, to a lot of different opportunities. Um, our financial resources committee with the CJCC will find funding um, for an intern, assuming that uh, I think our paid interns are looking for at least junior or senior level, if not graduate level students. Um, you can get some uh, experience in data analytics. Uh, there's been some discussion about, you know, if you stay on with us for a year, maybe we can talk about conference presentations and travel to national conferences. Um, because I'm, again, an academic and that evidence-based research is a really important part of what I do for the county. Um, and also, uh, you know, the potential maybe if it's not a paid internship that we could at least cover the cost of your tuition for your internship credit. So that's something, right? So lots of different opportunities. Feel free to ask some questions. So for, for judicial probation, um, those internships are not paid. Um, however, there are some immediate opportunities after. We've had some veterans that um, interned with us and then went through both rehab and began to be paid to continue volunteering with us and we've had people do that um, for about six months to a year so you can continue and move to a paid through the voc rehab um, and then sometimes we if it's um, you graduate and have that bachelor's degree we offer contract positions um, so this is sort of in between our hiring periods where you can be a contract probation officer and those are um, paid as well. Yeah, that's great to know. Another theme I think you guys are hearing here is that while UCC is requirement for clock hours for undergraduates is that you have to complete 160 clock hours for that semester that you are enrolled formally for your internship that many times you have to make a longer time commitment with these agencies. So your UCCS formal you know, obligation would be for one semester and 460 hours and you would get your you know, internship completed in that way, but you still absolutely would have to honor your, your commitment that you made for your agencies and that's very important because that leads into those amazing opportunities that you have. Uh, did I see your hand up there somewhere again? No? Okay, more questions? I know, you are, I know there's more questions. I know you guys have questions in your head. Okay, so I know a lot of questions the students ask. Did you want to ask? I just want to say, um, we are not tied to specific internships seasons. So if you're between, and you want to begin earlier, or you know, if you are not, if you're looking at spring, that's great. Um, but we take volunteer interns um, as with your obviously your professor's direction and blessing. But it's not <coughs> only to fall, spring, summer. You're primarily looking for really good people that really, yeah, as um, Enrique had mentioned, really can commit. Um, so we do we do offer that up that is outside of maybe traditional, what those windows look like. So. Yeah, and that's the other thing. I think the law enforcement agencies, which will fall under Mr. Walker, the, the definitely the application process is a little bit longer. So like Colorado Springs Speed, you already mentioned, they are completely full for spring and you're looking already summer. There's a definitely a longer window of uh, the application window. So again, you can uh, you can often start your hours at any or start your volunteering or internship at any point, and then formally enroll. It's it's sometimes a little bit almost like a two parallel processes when you are formally enrolled for the internship with us for the academic part, and you basically are taking an online course versus you know when you are volunteering in your agency. But we work very closely with that agency in terms of those hours. And evaluations and so forth. 
I know questions that students often ask me. So we have students who, you know, as the court, as a the court, um, you know, uh, director, you know, have made some mistakes in their past, and they obviously, you know, are now on a different trajectory. But since many criminal justice agencies do background checks, they often wonder about the different, you know, background requirements. So some students may have like things in their record, like misdemeanor convictions or arrests and so forth. So how stringent are some of the, I know a lot of students already mentioned, Bidi mentioned that there couldn't be any felony convictions and then no misdemeanors for three years. What, what are some other agencies, like for internships, how stringent are your requirements, like in terms of misdemeanor, felony convictions, what about the arrest? How long ago have you been able to smoke pot? That's a big thing for our students. So would you care to elaborate on things like that? Okay. We have drug test here at the public defender, so you can smoke Okay, so public defender does not drug test you, okay? <laughs> but you cannot have any criminal convictions? Okay, so no criminal convictions. What about arrests or just no convictions? You're not sure? No arrests, no, no convictions. Okay. So eight four three three. Uh, no arrests. We don't drug test. We do a background check. Okay. So no, uh, you cannot have any arrests or no convictions. No felonies. No felonies. Okay. So you're okay with the misdemeanors, but no felonies. Okay. But no drug testing there. Okay. Kansas City. Do you have? We do the drug test and no drugs. No drugs at all. And what about you have a timeline on felonies? Um, uh, felony convictions. Okay, so Canon City is no drugs whatsoever, zero, zero tolerance, no felonies, and misdemeanors, five years. Depending on the misdemeanor, yeah, case by case. What about the probation for the Um, So with probation, and what I was saying is what Steve was talking about, we're going to have you sign um, for us to do some the background check of the state, and then they go through all those details, so I can say that I specifically know exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, I would definitely, um, definitely mirror that what the same was saying that you should be absolutely 100% honest. Do not waste this individual sign. That is the worst thing that you could be doing. Um, they are already giving you all this time and effort, so be 100% honest upfront about anything that you may have in your background. It's going to be found out. I used to be a cop for 10 years running background investigations, and it will always come up. So just don't lie. What about the safe pass? It's obviously there's children involved, so you're probably going to be pretty in trouble. Um, yeah, we because we're working with child victims, um, there definitely can't be any can't be a sex offender, you can't you know have anything like that in your background. Um, but we have a very small volunteer program. Um, generally speaking, we don't have more than 15 volunteers at a time. Um, so everything is really case by case basis. So we'll consider any application. Um, and, and Okay, so again, key here is that it's, there's some discretion based on the agency. And Ms. Gonzalez, you work for state, so probably similar to other state agencies. Exactly. I'm not sure about the misdemeanor provisions, but um, definitely no felony, no marijuana, um, and then be upfront if, the, if you've done harder drugs and the time. Um, I've seen case by case on that too, so to be honest. And you have your 
federal, so that's probably pretty stringent. <laughs> 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 The background of basically, I would say, no felony, no crime against the children, obviously. Um, but I mean, we've had interns in the past that had like a drug or alcohol case from years ago that was a deferred sentence that was dismissed or something like that. Or, so it really is a case by case thing. And the, the, the drug testing, the pre employment screening would just be the one time as part of your application. Okay. You wouldn't have to do them every month like our defendants do. Um, we do do a background check, um, no drug testing. I don't know exactly what the background check looks for, but no felonies um, and misdemeanors might be case by case. Okay, right. And you already go you guys. And what about the state? Ours, uh, we have a drug testing policy, and then uh, no felonies. Thank you. 
kindergarten, um, then you know you wouldn't be lying if you were unaware that you had a family member involved in something, right? So that would be an outside consideration in your application. Okay, guys. I'm going to clarify one more thing. Often students do not, or not often, but sometimes students do not know the difference between probation and parole officer. Could somebody elaborate on that for us, please? <laughs> okay, great. Do you want mine? Uh, sure. Actually, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so uh, the biggest difference the differences with probation and parole is parole, my understanding is you have to be post-certified. Probation, you do not. Parole is simply is for clients that have gone through the prison system and been placed on parole as a, as a Department of Corrections sentence. For, so, for different wrong. So, if they finish whatever some time in some prison, or, uh, then they can be placed on parole. With us, nobody, very rarely get anybody that's actually on parole. Uh, but they would have to have a probation case. So ours are direct sentences from the court. Parole come from the Department of Corrections after being sentenced there. They've shown a period of compliance in the, in the prison system and have been approved to be placed on parole. Uh, and then again, they're post-certified. They're armed. They have a uh, full uh, police, uh, police officer authorities to do arrests. Probation, we actually we have the authority, but we do not invoke that. We don't do our own arrests. We use local law enforcement to do, do all of our own. <coughs> Does that answer that question? Yeah. I'm probably missing some stuff, but that's like the basics. Absolutely. And then you have parole and probation officers in every jurisdiction. Like as you can tell, we have probation officers here from the fourth and eighteen judicial districts, and from state and federal. There are also there are multiple different levels. So those duties that you would have as an intern probably vary a little bit from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but there are lots of similarities as well.